We're going to look at solubility now and what effect changes in temperature and changes in pressure will have on solubility of various solutes. And it turns out that the trend is opposite if you, whether you're looking at solids or gases. So there's an opposite trend for solids. and gases. All right, for solids, most of the time, if the temperature goes up, that solid will be more soluble. All right, and so that is true for most, but not all solids. If you've ever tried to dissolve sugar into water, like to make rock candy, you probably know that you have to heat up the water in order to get more sugar dissolved in there. We can show this graphically by doing a solubility graph in which we have solubility on one axis and temperature on the other. And for most substances, the curve will be positive. Something like sodium nitrate, it's positive. Um, potassium nitrate is also positive, although not the same shape. KBr, potassium bromide, also positive. Most substances will have a positive change in solubility for temperature. There are a few, however, that will be negative, okay? But that is the exception. All right, but for gases, whenever the, the temperature goes up, the solubility goes down. You may have observed this by um, drinking pop or soda. If your soda is warm, the can will have more pressure in it. That's because there's carbon dioxide dissolved in your soda, which is what makes it carbonated. But if you warm up the soda, it comes out of solution. It has more pressure in the can. When you try to open it, it'll spray more. All right, and the explanation for that is that when you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy of those gas, gas molecules, kinetic energy increases, which makes it easier for those gas molecules to overcome the intermolecular forces that hold them in solution. And they can be act like gases. All right, we can also look at an enthalpy explanation. Most of the time, a solid, such as sodium chloride, dissolved in water, will be an endothermic process. And that means we can represent heat as a reactant. Whereas for a gas, like carbon dioxide dissolved in water, making a solution is an, generally an exothermic process. And therefore, if you add heat, so you raise the temperature, the reaction will be driven to the right. More heat will make it form more of the solution. So that's why higher temperatures will make it dissolve more. Whereas for gases, if you add heat, it will go more to the left because more heat will make it go more toward the gas. So it will come out of solution. Now let's look at pressure and how it, affe it affects solubility. Now that we know temperature is different for solids and for gases, we'll look at pressure. Um, for sol both solids and liquids, they're not very compressible. Pressure doesn't do much to them. Okay, so they're, they have little effect when you change pressure. So a change in pressure will change solubility very, very little amount for most solids and liquids. But for gases, which are highly compressible, pressure has a profound effect on solubility. It turns out as you increase the pressure, you will also increase the solubility. Let's look at these pictures. If you have a certain amount of gas molecules over a solution, then you will have some gas molecules also dissolved in solution. And those and you will reach a state reach a state of equilibrium where the number of molecules out of solution that are crashing into the surface and dissolving will be equal to the amount of molecules that are 
from in the solution that are crashing to the surface and going out. Okay, so you'll maintain that pressure. But if you increase the number of molecules above suddenly, then you will have more molecules which are crashing down, and so you will dissolve more in solution, which, which makes you understand. So here's pressure going up. By putting more molecules above the solution, it'll make more of them dissolve in the solution. We represent this with an equation that goes like this. The solubility of a gas is equal to a constant times the pressure of the gas above it. This is known as Henry's Law. And this constant we write as K sub H for the Henry's Law constant. Okay, so this is the solubility of the gas K sub H is the Henry's Law constant and that will be for a particular gas and for, for a particular gas and solvent combo. All right, and P is just the pressure of the gas above the solution. All right, and what are the units of KH? The Henry's Law constant. Well, when you have a Henry's Law equation, the solubility is usually given by moles per liter, and the pressure is generally given in atmospheres. So in order to have all the units cancel, your Henry's Law constant has to have moles per liter, and it has to have atmospheres on the bottom. So it will be moles per liter atmosphere. Let's use this equation to solve a problem. How many moles of carbon monoxide and the Henry's Law constants given will dissolve in one liter of water if the partial pressure of carbon monoxide is 2.75 atmospheres? You try to work this problem. And we will use the equation given above for the solubility. We're looking for the solubility because we're looking how many moles will dissolve. So the solubility of CO is going to equal the Henry's Law constant, which is given 9.71 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter atmosphere. And that's times the partial pressure which is 2.75 atmospheres, so our atmospheres will cancel, and we get 2.67 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. All right, but the question is asking how many moles, and we have one liter, so it's going to be times one liter, which gives us 2.67 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of CO.